Well, hey there, everybody. It's Brendan, aka Cliff Jumper. This is probably an entry level video. For those of you who are experienced racers and mechanics, you probably don't need to watch this. But for folks who are curious about how to diagnose a leak in your car, especially when you're getting a check engine light and you might not want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to diagnose it, you're to let's do this again. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Brendan, AKA Cliff Jumper, and this is just gonna be a, hopefully a quick video. We're gonna talk about how to diagnose if you've got a check engine light going on in your car and you've done the, the bit of scanning to find out from your OBD reader that you've got a small leak in your evaporative recovery system. So rather than spend hundreds of dollars to get a smoke test done and a leak down diagnosis at a shop, if you have an air compressor like even one of those little pancake deals you can get a smoke testing machine and do it yourself so we're going to cover that today let's check it out previously on battlestar galactic Yes, indeed. Many Toyota Sequoia and Tundra owners have run into this issue, and we are going to try to deal with it today. The VSC off, VSC traction, and the check engine light combination, which come up with a particular combination of OBD2 codes that pop up. So we're continuing to delve through this, figure out what's going on. Let's see where we get. Most of the time, Toyotas have a really rock solid reputation for longevity and trouble free performance, and they just keep going without many issues. However, there are some bugs that occasionally come up, and we've run into one of them with our first generation Sequoia. Now, this is common to the Tundras as well, and the issue is something that looks like this this is a valve that helps recirculate the fumes from the tank, uh, the fuel tank, and maintains proper pressure in the tank. So if the pressure is too low, it allows pressure in. If pressure is too high, it bleeds it out, and it's part of the evaporative recovery system in the car. Now, there are a few of these valves involved in the system, and if any of them go bad, then you will get codes like P0440, P0441, P0442, P0446, they're all related. And unfortunately, the way the system works is you'll get these combination codes along with both of the VSC lights and the check engine light to pop on, and it won't tell you exactly what's actually happening. So you gotta go through and test each of these valves to make sure that they're working properly. And we also need to look for vacuum leaks. Now I've been going through the engine bay looking for vacuum leaks, finding loose connections, and sealing them up to make sure that we don't have vacuum leaks, uh, vacuum leaks operative. Now I have already replaced this valve right here. It was faulty, it's been replaced. I have not tested this valve yet, but I do have a brand new replacement for it in case we test it and it turns out to be bad. So we're gonna test this one first. There is one more back here And there is this whole vacuum canister assembly. Now I've disconnected mine. It's normally hanging up inside this, this area up against the, the top, or I should say up against the, the floor pan. I've unbolted it and it's hanging here loose. And there is one more valve right here that could be faulty. So we're gonna test that. Additionally, this whole system has to hold vacuum and they are kind of notorious for developing leaks over the years. So we're going to disconnect a couple of the components, make sure they are properly sealed up, and then we'll do a smoke check and check the system to be sure. But I think this valve might be bad, so we'll test that one as well. 
earlier when we were smoke checking, we were finding that there was smoke coming out through the fuel filler neck, and that could be a bad filler neck itself, which is up inside there, and that is, well, you know, relatively accessible, so it's not too bad to change the whole thing, but we have to unbolt it from up there, follow it all the way back up along the top, and back, back in there it connects to some hoses that go to the fuel tank. Fuel tank is all the way back there. So hopefully it's not a bad fuel feeler neck. I'm not really sure why that would go bad, but it happens. It's an older car. A couple of more while you're in there kind of things, because it's always while you're in there. As a matter of fact, one of the while you're in there projects happened to me on the road to just getting to this vacuum canister and that was dealing with my spare tire because it would not lower and this might be another problem that you have encountered the winch assembly to lower the spare tire will get all gunked up see how nasty this is it's just it's just coated with junk and while this turns the cable wasn't actually releasing and i, I see that turns freely and no cable action. So this thing is dead. I'm going to have to pull that out, put in a new one, and then we can put our spare tire back. Now, how did I get the spare tire out, you ask? I'm glad you asked. And this was the biggest pain in the butt because I took it to a tire shop to see if they could lower my spare tire so I could get access in there. They were not able to get my tire out. So I ended up having to use a cutting device, a grinding wheel, to cut the end off of the pin that, where is it? This is what goes up and secures the spare tire from underneath. There's a pin underneath here, and it's connected to the cable, and that lets you lower and raise the spare tire in place. So I had to use the cutting wheel to cut that off, make sure the tire didn't fall on my face and get that out of the way. So spare tires out of the way. I will have to replace that winch assembly. They're fortunately, they're not a horrible amount of money. They're like 50 bucks or so. So we'll put a new one in as part of this project, but let's test these valves and see if they are functional and then go from there. Now I may link in my description here, there's a series of videos, a really fun mechanic to watch who has taken a step-by-step -step approach of how to test these things. If you have a power probe, it is way easier to do so. I do not. So I'm going to use a multimeter to test for continuity and make sure that the, uh, the motor itself in the little vacuum solenoid is working. And I'm also going to do the old school method of removing it. I'm going to try to blow through it. If it is working, I should not be able to blow through the valve. It should be closed, and it only opens when signal is sent to it. If I can blow through it, the valve is bad. So that's an easy test. So let's pull that out and test it. seems pretty loose even though it's been zip tied on there I may need to get some hose actual hose clamps and tighten this because oh yeah look at that that that's not tight at all that might have been our issue but I'm going to remove this and we'll, we'll test it all right very scientific I can't blow through it. So the valve part is okay. And now I'm gonna test for continuity and see if uh, you know, electrically it's doing what it's supposed to do. The ideal would be to run some, some current through it to see if the valve clicks. I don't have a power probe to do that, but I can do jumpers to a battery and that will be sufficient. So we'll do that. So the first thing we'll do here, we're just gonna check for continuity between the two poles in this and make sure that the motor's not burned out. So there is continuity. 
And just for comparison's sake, here's the, the new valve that I have. See, it's the same reading. Now, we're gonna check for function, and what I'll do is, I'm gonna put my microphone right down next to it, because otherwise you probably won't hear what's going on. If I stick this right here, if I run a little bit of a current, Across. It doesn't have to be much, just a 9 volt battery. Putting a couple of plugs to it because I don't have a power probe to do this. We should hear a clicking noise coming from it as we run current through. So we'll just aim for that. So I'm going to connect those. It is making a clicking noise. So the valve is functioning. The valve is functioning. So that's not our issue. So this valve can go back happily in place and continue valving. And we will seal up those vacuum leaks where it was living and make sure that this is actually doing its thing. So it looks like there's a few places here that could be potential vacuum leaks. I'm able to turn this without much resistance. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six hose clamps to tighten this up and make sure that it's not giving us a vacuum leak from one of those locations. So we'll do that. We'll still need to smoke check it to double check that these connections are all secure, but it looks like they're pretty good now. And we can focus on that back end there and making sure that that is all properly sealed up. So let's go take a peek. So here's the valve we're concerned with, and it's really hard to get to to test in place. So I'm going to remove it, test it, and then if it's good, we'll put it back. If it's not, we'll replace it. This screw on the vacuum canister is fighting me and it's stripping. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the Dremel tool, cut a slot in it so we can get a bigger bit in there and hopefully loosen it up. Yeah, because old car. All right, try the little blowing test. Okay, so no air is passing through it. Now let's test it for function. Again, we'll check for continuity first. Come on. There we go. Okay, we get continuity. And we'll check for function. It functions. All right, so the valve is probably not the issue here. It is quite possible that this assembly is leaking somewhere and there's a couple of spots where they're they're notorious for it so these valve assemblies on either end tend to be a spot they can develop leaks around the other side but it's not really that likely and i'm just checking for external evidence of any leakage, I'm not really seeing anything. So I'm gonna remove these valves and we'll check them out and see what they might reveal to us. So the O-ring is 
kind of deteriorated. So we could put a new O-ring in there on at least that side. This is a one-way valve, so it is working. So that one appears to be okay. Now, since it is old, I mean, we can always do some extra sealing around these surfaces, but it shouldn't be necessary. It seems like it's maybe the O-ring, but we'll check the other one here too. Could just be a matter of old O-rings. And this O-ring seems like it's actually held pretty decent shape. It's not deformed. There's no wetness around where there shouldn't be. So this one's probably fine. We'll replace it because we got it out. We may as well. We'll go ahead and clean that up and reassemble. Now I'm thinking this is probably, probably fine. All right, so I uh, have a set of O-rings, you know, one of the universal kits from Harbor Freight Tools. So we got some new O-rings to pop on here. Just cleaning up what we have to make sure that there isn't any dirt or debris in it when we reassemble this whole thing. So new O-rings. I'm gonna put a little bit of lube on them as we're installing it. Just so that they slide in nicely and without any issues. Okay, this should be ready to go back on the car and we'll run the smoke test with it in place and look for leaks, but this should be all right. New O-rings. The valve is tested, should be okay there. These connections where it goes on to the, uh, the recirculation system, these are iffy though, because they're old hoses, they're just sliding on kind of loose, they might need some hose clamps. Okay, all of that is now back together. Time to smoke test. And then we'll take this thing off before we forget to. I'm gonna have to get a couple of uh, ratchet wrenches for the top. There's four, and probably 12 or 13 millimeter bolts up top, so shouldn't be too bad. While I'm here, I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of penetrating lubricant so it'll be easier in a couple of minutes when I actually do remove that. Smoke machine for those who aren't familiar with it again I think I covered it earlier but basically it heats up this liquid that puts smoke into the vacuum system it's injecting it here I'll unpop it for a second so it's uh, uh yeah making smoke and sorry pressurizes the system this regulator puts about one psi in so it's just a very mild pressurization into the system and we should be able to look around and see if, if there any smoke pops out then we know there's a leak and i don't see anything it's been running up here in the front for a minute or two let's check back here where we were doing work it had previously been leaking around here but i don't see anything so we're gonna go check underneath I think I smell it a little bit, but I'm not seeing it anywhere. So let me just double check that I have enough smoke fluid in the machine that it's gonna make a good amount of smoke. We'll double check. Up here is where it was doing it before. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. See that? Yes, the filler neck. So, that's fun. Oh yeah, we look up in there, 
filler neck is totally leaking. So we have a bad filler neck apparently. Well, that, that is good time fun. So that's what we need to replace. We've checked all the valves. We now know that the filler neck itself is the issue and that to replace it. Yeah, look at that smoke coming out there now, nice and thick. So to replace it, we have to undo some stuff from back there and see where it snakes back. Underneath here, runs along here and back there. That is where it connects to the actual fuel pipe. So I think we can reach it from the other side. Yeah. That's not too bad to get to. Unbolt it at both of those places here. Unbolt the bracket and we should be able to pull it out, hopefully without too much of a problem, but that is what we need to replace. So, mischief managed in terms of checking the normal usual suspects for this repair and this issue, but that's gonna plague us. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Well, we were successful in doing a few things today. We were successful in removing the um, spare tire. I do still need to remove that winch assembly that's broken. So we'll do that, but that's only four bolts. So that should just pop right out. And I have to order a new one. So I'll make sure I get the right part number off of it. We double checked all these fittings. Valve is working. The valve in the back is working. We tied up where there might've been some vacuum leaks here. This valve has been replaced. And we have double checked that, yes, indeed, the leak is the fuel filler neck itself. And for those who are just gonna say, oh, check the, the cap. The cap is brand new. I just replaced the cap. And when we were testing this before, we had seen leak coming, not from inside here, but from outside the fuel filler neck. So the smoke is not coming in here. It is an external thing from one of the outside nipples that attaches to it. We'll keep at it. I'll update you with progress once we get the filler neck and we'll film doing that because that's sure to be fun, right? All right, God bless. Let me know how I can be praying for you and we will tune in again very soon. Make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't. It helps us out a lot. God bless you, see you later. And on that terrible disappointment, <laughs> it's time to say goodbye, we'll be back.